All right, guys, continuing on with the three-phase calcs, we're going to look at the next one. we got a, a delta source, and we've got a Y load. So, again, we're not sure what the primary is. This is our second area of our transformer. And it looks like we've been given a, a 480 voltage, and we've been given a resistance on the phase of our Y of 40 ohms. So this voltage right here, this 480, that's on the inside of the circuit. So that given value is going to be our phase voltage. So we've got our 480 volts on the phase. And we can just keep track of our rules for each of these guys. So we know that for the delta, we know that V line is equal to V phase, but our I line is equal to I phase times root three. And then over here for the Y, we know that uh, V line is equal to V phase times root three. And we know that our I line and I phase are identical. So we've got 480 volts from here to here. That means that we have 480 volts from here to here. And that means that this voltage on the outside of the circuit, or from line to line, is going to be 480 volts as well. So that'll be our line voltage. Beauty. So we'll put our 480 volts line here. We can see that that voltage comes across and is impressed across our entire Y load. So our line voltage here is 480 volts. Uh, but you can see that to go from this point to this point, there's two resistors. So this voltage on the inside here, this voltage on the phase, cannot be the same as the voltage on the line, right? That and that is not the exact same voltage as from here to here. So we've now got to take that voltage that we have on the line and we've got to divide by root three, right? Because if we want to find our V phase, that's equal to our V line divided by root three. So we've got 480 volts divided by root three. And if we put that into the calculator, we've got 480 volts divided by the square root of three. And that's going to give us 277.12. So we're just going to round that off to 277 volts on the phase. Okay, so that voltage on the phase we can see now is 277 volts. Okay, and now we've got straight Ohm's law in order to find out our currents. I think we're doing our currents in red, so we'll start off there. And that current on the phase is going to be 277 volts divided by 40 ohms. So 277 divided by 40. Okay, let's just drop that in here. 277 divided by 40 ohms gives us 6.925. So that's our phase current. And that current is right there. Okay, so we've got our phase current here of 277 volts divided by our 40 ohms. That gives us 6.925 amps on the phase. We can see here that there's only one path for that current to flow through there. So the current on the outside, the line current, is going to be identical at 6.925 amps. So I line is equal to I phase for the Y. That's 6.925 amps on the line. And if we follow that across, we can see that that same current is right here. Right? We're keeping it simple right now. There's just one single load fed from one source there. So we can bring that easy enough. We can bring that line current over here, 6.925 amps on the line. And then we need to find our phase current. Our phase current there, if we reconfigure this equation right here, our phase current for the delta is going to be our line current divided by root 3. So we'll take our 6.925 amps that we have on the line. We're going to divide it by root 3. And that gives us 3.998. Okay, so basically 4 amps. Okay, so on the inside of that delta, we're going to have 4 amps flowing. So we're going to have 4 amps right here on the phase. 
right? We got four amps right here on the phase, and we've got four amps right here on the phase. Those two currents, those two four amps combine to give us 6.925. Why don't they combine to give us eight amps? It's because this four amps and this four amps do not happen at the same time. They're 120 degrees out of phase. So, but the four amps times root three is gonna give us 6.925. Beautiful, last thing we need to do is find our individual power values. So over here for our wattage, total wattage for the circuit, we can take our V line, so our 480 volts on the line, times our I line, so 6.925. And then we're gonna multiply those guys by the square root of three. So we're gonna take our three phase values and multiply them by root three. Okay, so we've got 480 volts uh, times our line current of 6.925 times the square root of three. That gives us 5,757.34, 57.57.34. Okay, I'm just gonna put watts there because we just have resistors so far. All right, so all we need to do now is just double check that the other equation for power is gonna be giving us an identical value. So on this guy here, we could use the other equation using our phase values, 480 volts on the phase times our phase current. Our phase current is four amps. And we're gonna multiply that by three phases. So we have 40 times four amps times three. So we'll bring up our calculator here. And we got, let's just move that over. So we've got 480 volts times four amps on the phase times three phases gives us 5760. Okay, remember that these guys are essentially the same values. We've had rounding errors all the way through, right? So 5760 VA is same as 5757 watts. The only reason why I'm using VA is because the secondary of the transformer, but essentially it's watts because we have a three phase resistive load. All right, guys. Right now we've got a disgusting amount of information on the page here, but hopefully have you been able to see the patterns all the way through. And hopefully the, the Y and the Delta configurations are slowly starting to settle in. Okay, guys, see you on the next video. Next video, we'll look at uh, another configuration for three-phase.